Good morning and welcome to the regularly scheduled, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, welcome to the regularly scheduled Finance and Governance Committee meeting. The date is September 8th to 2020. And we'll have first and foremost have the city clerk take the roll, please. Member Lopez. Here. Member Perello. Oh, I'm sorry, he's up. Uh, he'll be joining us soon. And uh, Chair Flynn. Present. Uh, thank you. We have a quorum and the agenda for this meeting was posted on Wednesday, September 2nd. Thank you very much. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Be seated, please. So the very first item on the agenda um, is public uh, comment on items not on the agenda. And I believe, Madame City Clerk, you said there was one speaker? Yes, correct. Okay, uh, could we call that speaker now, please? Hello. Good morning, Pat. You're live in the council. I'm sorry. You're live in the committee meeting. And you have two minutes to address the committee on items not on the agenda. Please begin now. Uh, okay. Uh, hold on a minute. I was just driving. Hold on a minute until I get my paperwork out. I thought this was going to be the latter part of the evening or the morning instead of this early. I thought it was going to start at 11 o'clock. Okay. All right. So we're on, we're on the um, public works. And transportation committee. This Ms. is the Brown. finance and governance committee, and we're on items not on the agenda. Governance committee. Uh, I don't think I requested. I, I requested on items not on the on items not on the agenda. Um, I requested for the housing and economic development committee. Ms. Brown, that's it's for um, pu public that co public comment on. Ms. Brown, uh, housing and Ms. Brown, that starts later this afternoon, I believe at 4 p.m. or 4.30. Yes, that's this afternoon. Okay, okay, and you have no comments, Ms. Brown, under items not on the agenda for the Finance and Governance Committee? No. Okay, thank you. No, no, comment, no comments on that committee at all. Thank you. Okay, uh, Madam City Clerk, I believe Councilman Perillo is present. Yes. Okay, we'll move forward on the agenda to um, the information consent agenda, which is item C. And what is the pleasure of the committee? I'll move to approve. Okay, we have motion by um, council second. member uh, or committee member Lopez and a second by committee member Perello. The vote, please. Member Lopez. Yes. Member Perello. Yes. Chair Flynn. Aye. The motion carries unanimously. Very well. We'll now move to the um, uh, under reports item D. It's under the city manager's department uh, or city manager department and the subject council's annual calendar of routine items. Recommendation is that the finance and governance committee receive and discuss the council's annual calendar of routine items and provide feedback. And we'll start with the city manager, Mr. Newen. Uh, I'm going to start, uh, Mayor. This is uh, Sherry Klima, the Deputy okay. City Manager. Um, so we have um, prepared for you an annual calendar of routine items. The intent here is to show you in advance what your year will look like and what many of your years look like because these are repeat items. Um, and then from there to fill out items that are... Uh, larger items for this year and, and then following smaller items for this year. The, the goal is to allow you 
all as members of the council to allow the public and everybody to sort of preview the year and understand um, when things are gonna be coming your way. And also today's goal is for you all to um, be able to balance out this agenda and um, see if things make sense. There are some items on this calendar that can move um, because they are flexible. There are other items that either for legal reasons or um, for sequencing reasons or whatever cannot move, but we'll be able to let you know that if you've got requests to move items. So what we really need from you is some feedback on this. And again, these are routine items. So these are items that repeat themselves quarterly or uh, semi-annually or annually or every couple of years. Um, I'm not gonna read through the whole uh, calendar for you, which we've duplicated. We've attached the calendar and we've also duplicated it in the presentation. But if we can um, look at the months in general, September is a pretty light month. You've got eight items. We've got them separated into three categories, by the way. The blue is items where action is required. The yellow or gold is items that are informational. These are not synonymous with um, information consent items versus reports. They're just, um, the blue ones are the ones where the council will need to be um, much more involved in uh, providing feedback and providing some action. Um, and then finally, the orange is ceremonial items. So you'll see in September, you've got eight items. And again, this is just the repeated items. This is not everything on your agenda. You've got four items where action's required, one informational and three ceremonial items. October is another light month with four um, items where action is required and two informational items. This year, there's gonna be a ceremonial item uh, that happens in October as well, but it's typically um, done in November. So we listed it in November. Oh, I'm sorry. These are the, ceremon the ceremonial items in October. So we do have seven ceremonial items in October. November, nine items. So again, five that where action is required, one where it's informational and three that are ceremonial items, another pretty light month. Excuse me, Ms. Yep. Cleo, can you yes. please explain on November the number one item, executive resolution, exactly uh, plain English, what is that? Yes, the executive resolution is the resolution for the um, department heads, the city management team, um, and it also has some other um, employees such as um, the attorneys in the city attorney's office. Um, and this is the resolution that, since these folks are not covered by an MOU, this is the resolution that details um, their benefits and so forth. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> So that is November. December has um, six items where action is required and next, I'm sorry, eight items where action is required, one informational item and two ceremonial items. January, you'll see 12 items total. January starts to be pretty busy, but you will notice, for example, this is a good example in January. If you look at items five, six, and seven, those are not annual, it's every five years. So those are different rates that you, um, we're gonna be coming and asking you to pass, and it's every five years, and you'll see those are not coming in the same year. Water in 2021, ER in 2022, and wastewater in 2023. February, um, you've got the five items where action is required and two ceremonial items. It's a pretty light month. 
Okay, then March is where we start to really pick up. We've got these six items and another seven on this page. So um, nine that are at, where action is required, one informational item and three ceremonial items. May uh, Ms. Kleeman, may I ask a question on this, please, Mayor? Sure. Councilman Pro. Okay, on, on March, number one, banking contract. <clears throat> Will we ever get the item on the agenda that the treasurer has asked in the past, something we credit cards, and if we have the opportunity to, to avoid the extra payments that we're paying to the credit card firms, apparently he has claimed that there is something that can be done. Will that be included in this item? Uh, say at least I can figure that it'll be there January 21. It's not an annual item, but it is coming your way uh, pretty soon. The Billing and Licensing Department uh, Director, Eden Alamari, is working that out where uh, the, the fees for paying with a credit card will be passed on to the users. Okay, and we can expect that before the end of the year or mid-year next year? What do we, what do you, what does someone think in the executive branch? So. Council member, we'd have to get back to you on that. Again, that's not a periodic item. That is a one-time item. Okay, well, because I, I would just think that since the credit card companies change periodically at their whim, they give you things in the mail. Um, I get them rather frequently from the different credit cards uh, providers. Um, maybe we want to consider that in the future. Just a thought. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. So, March... Uh... March is a busy month, and then April, the whole spring and summertime start to really ramp up, as you all know. So in April, um, we've got these nine items, and looks like we skipped a number, but a lot of ceremonial items as well. Then May, you will see you have a very long agenda in May, as you'll see, and in June. So here's May, and there's June. Um, June, as you know, uh, is a very busy month, mostly because of the budget. So while it's only listed once and it looks like a short list, it's busy in terms of the amount of time that it takes up on your calendar. Then July starts to slow down a little bit, uh, but you do have a, a pretty hearty list in July as well. And we listed August, but as you know, you are the council is dark in August, so we don't have any items for August. We do also have two more aspirational items, meaning they are not yet on your routine agenda, but they will be, we're working um, with the CAG, so Senior Services Commission and the Commission on Community Relations does update you all annually. We want to work with the rest of the CAG so that they will also provide annual reports to you all, and we're going to spread those out over the year. And then also we're hoping uh, that the council members would embrace um, annual updates uh, from you all. This is as representatives on each of the regional boards. So what we need from you today is some feedback on this. We're going to come back to this committee again and uh, have more items. We're still working on this calendar of annual items, of recurring items. And then we're going to start to fill out sort of some of the major projects that are coming your way, um, some of the development projects that are coming your way, and Public Works has some huge uh, CIP projects that you're aware of, but we're going to start scheduling them and, and um, filling out this calendar. And I'm available for questions as well. So thank you very much, Ms. Klima. Um, and just before we start with the committee members, uh, I think um, uh, this is really good that the city manager and with working with Ms. Klima that uh, for the very first time, the council gets uh, at least a council committee is able to preview uh, what um, what a schedule looks like for an annual calendar. And, and uh, indeed, it makes it very difficult in this framework um, 
to actually get into specifics about the calendar. Um, and I have a lot of things to say about that. But I think for the very first time, this is where the, the whole um, uh, council committee is actually taking a look at what do we have on an annual basis and semi-annual and every five years, what's the cycle of business that the council has? And I'm sure it raises a lot of very interesting questions. So what we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to start with uh, committee member Lopez, and then we'll go to committee member Perillo. Um, committee member Lopez. Thank you. Yes, this is definitely very, uh, very helpful to look ahead. Um, one of the questions that I have in terms of, of looking to balance out the time and the number of items that, that we're hearing in a council meeting is um, <clears throat> how many of these, or if there's a way to identify which ones would possibly go through a committee first um, yeah. and how much attention uh, would require, or how much time uh, would would be needed at a council meeting. So, I mean, the purpose of the committee meetings is that, that uh, the, the committees are hearing some of these items and then referring them to the council as a whole for, uh, for a final action. Um, so just wondering if we can identify those differences because I think that would help to balance out um, the items and, and, uh, and make sure that they're evenly spread out so that we can give them the appropriate attention that is needed. That's great feedback. We um, had planned on creating uh, calendars that uh, take these items, put them approximately a month ahead of time, the ones that do need to go to committee, so we can prepare that for the next time that this comes back to finance and governance, and we can also um, try to add times to these so that you get a sense of how long each item, how long staff anticipates each item will take. Thank you. Very well. <clears throat> Committee member Perillo. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Um, and, um, <clears throat> Councilwoman Lopez's question is very good. I do believe this is going to be a tremendous improvement, not just for council members that have been here for a while, but for anybody coming on board new and especially the public. Um, I would hope that there would be some sort of hard copy given uh, at the beginning of each year where we stand and what's coming up um, so that we cannot uh, have a council member, myself included, saying nobody told me I didn't know it's on it's on the council member um, I do really appreciate Ms. Lopez's question with respect to when do they go to committee and when does it go to straight to the council there have been recently because of time issues and the city wanted to take the council wanted to take the whole month of August off um, that some things have not been able to go to committee first and I believe that the committee system is of definite worthwhile. There's a tremendous amount of uh, angst in the community that they think that they're getting shortchanged. But uh, ladies and gentlemen of the community, if you pay attention to what happens to the committee, most committees ask one hell of a lot more questions than ever get asked at a council meeting. And I think that's good for the, for the city, good for the residents, and good for government. A couple of points that I'd like to know that I don't see here. There's some big issues coming up. Um, that we've talked about in the past um, and that are weighing over the residents in various parts of the city of Oxnard. When will there be updates consistently with respect to the levees, the Santa Clara River? SCR 3, the Santa Clara River levy issue below the freeway um, as it goes downstream is very active and there's a lot of work going on, county, city, lots of things going on. But SCR 1, putting River Park in tremendous at risk for going into a flood zone, depending on what happens at the federal government level with FEMA, I think that there's a tremendous amount of residence business and a good portion of the city's resources in that area that we need to have a consistent update of what's going on. Uh, most recently, we have uh, uh, another issue. Most recently, we have residents, uh, to put it mildly, raising cane about they see the golf course packed with cars and they want to know, well, or why are we doing this and why are we paying for maintenance and why are we doing all these expenses and we're gifting public monies? Um, when do we expect consistent updates on whatever the agreements are going forward, including present time with the golf course? And as far as those uh, expenditures for maintaining the golf course, it's very similar to when you go to work, I don't think you expect your boss to pay for your haircut or to wash your clothes. If your boss owns the business and the city owns the golf course, the city's got to take care of washing its own underwear and getting its own haircut. 
that's not the obligation of the golf course operator. But some people see things differently. But we at least need to know where we are. I do understand the city manager's um, intelligent thought on not wanting to give people false hopes, but we must be coming upon an anniversary date where we can give some indication of what's going on. And last, um, again, Ms. Klima, a good report, Mr. Uh, Nguyen, thank you. Lastly, we have a, one of our major enterprise funds, the uh, resource recovery, the, the trash. Uh, we have a contract and the contract is coming up to an expiration date and moving forward with the city of Oxnard. I mean, when we have major contracts like that, I think that they should be also included in the list. And I did not see that except for the contract with the VRSD to monitor the, the gas coming off. And I know the mayor pro tem has written a request to me, which I forwarded to the VRSD to get her answer. I've yet to hear of the answer. Maybe she has and she can share it. Those are my concerns. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, to committee member um, Perello. Um, I have uh, a number of items that I'd like to address. And uh, first and foremost um, is uh, just, I think the council calendar, uh, one of the things that the city manager, first of all, to acknowledge Mr. Nguyen, um, I had brought this idea of the committee structure to the city council about a year, starting about a year prior to the city manager arriving. And I wanna thank Mr. Nguyen for actually getting it implemented because I wasn't, um, I wasn't successful at communicating this to the council and um, and a lot of members of the public with this whole thing about transparency thought that somehow the committee system would undermine transparency. And um, it's amazing because every, every single uh, legislative body in America, uh, largely speaking, has a committee system and I'm going to remove then city councils. Not all city councils have a, a committee system. But I think this committee system, the implementation of a committee system was not only needed, it allows for better public policy making. And I want to say that to my two colleagues on the committee. I think that uh, any type of, of organization has to provide the best opportunities for decision making. That's that's number one. Second is, is that I would rate uh, the very first year of the committee system, uh, I'd give it a B. Uh, grade, maybe a B minus. And I'll get into some details about why I give it a B or a B minus in a, in a few seconds. But I want to raise one important question, and that is the annual calendar of the city council. And I, I'll just use today as an example. This was Labor Day weekend. And unless somebody was really planned on this committee, uh, which means, um, you know, back, third, back when this calendar was released for this committee meeting, they started looking at the agenda and they were well planned in advance. Um, it makes decision making, I think, somewhat difficult after a Labor Day weekend, especially a warm Labor Day weekend where everybody gets out of the house. And it makes decision making difficult um, for many other holidays. So I think when it comes to the actual planning of the, of the calendar, we should be talking once again, there might be instances where two meetings, two city council meetings, especially during the budget time, or maybe even three are needed to get the workflow done. But I would question um, and ask the council and this committee uh, at some point to, you know, when we consider the annual calendar, is it is it conducive to the best decision making that the day after a holiday that we're really getting into the the meat and bones of uh, of the structure of our governance? And I would I would just question whether or not that is efficient or the best decision making. So what I want to say is uh, I want to take what uh, council member uh, and committee member Lopez uh, first brought up is what goes directly to a committee and what then goes directly to the city council. And I think this is a, this is a, a good discussion and it's a good starting point. So as far as the committee calendar is concerned, um, I think that Ms. Klima has laid out um, a structure of, of overall what, what does the city need to do. We know as an example that ceremonial items don't need to come to the committee, uh, largely speaking. Um, we know that um, uh, maybe some informational items need to come to the committee. Um, and we know that some of the um, required items that we make decisions on, that they also need to come to the committee. We know that. But what I've said to the city manager, what makes sense about the committee is this. It doesn't make sense to 
have a elaborate presentation at the committee level and turn right around and give that same elaborate presentation at the council level. Um, because as you recall, one of the reasons we went to a committee system is to get into the details. It's filmed so that the public it can play on the television so the public can see it. The public has a chance to interact and get into the details, but we don't want to rehash those very same details back at the council meeting. So I think almost as a policy that whatever the presentation is in a committee meeting, it should not be the same presentation before a council meeting. As an example, Ms. Klima's presentation here about the, the council calendar. I think it's what are the most important things that we can decide right now in this committee that then get forwarded to the regular council, but to go over this all over again is not, uh, is not wise. It's not efficient. Uh, it's not efficient and it's not going to help us with this calendar. So um, I'd like to say first and foremost, when, when this is raised, what comes to the committee versus what goes to the council? Well, so, so mayor, mayor, this is the city attorney. So uh, as Ms. Klima stated before, that will be a future agenda item for this committee will be the specific issue that you're talking about. So that one is not on the agenda okay. right now. I, um, I, we're I sort of hitting on the main council, specific council items and a future item will come to discuss the, well, the uh, uh, what goes to committee or not. No, no, I understand that Mr. Fisher, but I mean, um, they can't be, they can't be disconnected. I mean, we can't be talking about what happens at the committee and what happens and then somebody said, well, that's a future discussion. I mean, we're talking about right now, um, if, the, if the job of this committee is to do exactly what Councilman Pro, uh, Committee Member Perello just did, which is, I think the levies are important, or I think these issues are important, and I think they need to be addressed, then that's one set of things here. But we're talking really about an organizational structure here, Mr. Fisher, and, and um, I, I don't think that we, they can be disjointed. I don't think they can be disconnected. So I just, um, um, I'm not prepared to say um, the day after Labor Day, um, this item uh, is not good, that item is good, uh, maybe this item, maybe that item. It's kind of like trying to deal with a five-year uh, capital improvement plan when you have about 100 different capital improvement projects. I mean, how are you gonna start this discussion? So I just think what we need to do is, is make some decisions about that what comes directly to the committee, what comes then to the council. So the second thing is, is a, um, a concept of um, the budget cycle. So on that calendar that was presented to us, it's been my contention, members of this committee, that the city council, the most important role that a city council can play is making decisions as a legislative body about how money is spent. That will come into question depending on the issue before the voters if the city treasurer is allowed to be quote unquote the finance director and the city treasurer and as an elected official. Um, but the legislative body is slated with making these financial decisions. And it's long been my contention that not only this city council, but it's very common, city councils really don't make budgetary decisions. Those decisions are made by the staff with feedback from the council. They are vetted by the staff and then a final product is presented to the council and it's, it's kind of a fait accompli, right? I mean, because how do, how do you want to pick apart a budget process? It's just, it's just not efficient decision-making. So I, I would say that as part of the council calendar, which is then very much a part of the committee calendar, that there needs to be a more robust structure. There needs to be a more robust structure about council participation in the budget process. And uh, it needs to be that the council is involved, not in every detail of the budget, that's ridiculous. No council has time for that. But when it comes to um, planning, um, there should be a process that um, it's not coming to the council. I've, I've served on the city council. I've gone through 14 budgets, 14 budgets. And I would say that um, in that cycle that it's only usually in the late spring that the council first starts talking about the budget. And I'm not saying that there are no other budget discussions throughout the course of the year, but from an organizational standpoint, the council is not talking about the budget until about eight weeks, maybe at the most 12 weeks, but it's usually eight weeks before the budget is passed. And I really think that given the authority of the council, 
The council needs to use that authority. It needs to take that authority to make budgetary decisions. And, I th and my, it's my contention, the council is not doing that. And it's the structure, um, members of the committee, Mr. City Manager, Mr. City Attorney, and Ms. Klima, it's the structure that I think needs to change of a more pro proactive role of the council in that budget process. So when we're talking, Mr. Fisher and others about the council calendar, um, I think uh, Ms. Klima is going over it month by month. I mean, it, it maybe should be the first presentation to the council to, through the committee process should be in the month of January. I, you know, this is when the department's kind of like somewhat like maybe the federal budget process, but this is when the departments in January, you know, the whole budget cycle and at what point, and I think it's important for this committee to take a future look at the finance committee and this governance issue is looking at the budget cycle in terms of months and at what point should this be going to the committee and therefore what, and then what should the committee be doing in those, in the committee sessions and then what is actually presented to the city council. So, um, I just have maybe, I'm gonna see if I have a few other things. Um, uh, one other last thing that I like to talk about is um, public policy making on items that are not within the purview of the city council. So this past year, we had a debate about um, the city's safe city policy, which was largely, it was this time last year, I believe that that was it this time last year, it was actually the year before maybe, and this, the council had a robust discussion that went on several hours about immigration policy and the city safe city policy, right? So it got into national issues of immigration. Um, this, this council had a debate about energy policy, um, whether to oppose offshore oil drilling and then what effects would be affected in Ventura County. And there are calls now for this city council to have a national a debate about the national discussion about Medicare or just healthcare. And it's not necessarily that I'm saying as, a, as the chairman of this committee that we shouldn't be having these discussions. I'm saying that um, I think we need to have a process that, um, that these issues do go to the committees first and the committee maybe can refine the scope. Um, the committee can maybe vet it. The committee can even decide whether or not it even goes on a council agenda. And I know Mr. Fisher that would come down to policies and procedures or changing those policies and procedures. But I think it's very important. We've seen, um, I'll just give you an example, the discussion about the safe city policy, which we already had, which was already a policy of the city. We brought that forward to a council calendar and the energy policy, that request, and I had nothing against the request itself. It was just what, what ensued is that those two issues alone took one single council meeting. They took writing two letters, took one single council meeting. And I think that needs to be more properly vetted on the committee level before it goes to the full council. So those are my, those are my comments, Ms. Klima. And Ms. Klima, you've done an outstanding job laying this out. And uh, I, I might want to add one category uh, to this and that category, because now you have three categories, ceremonial calendar, um, you have uh, informational items, and then you have items that must go to the council. I've long thought that this city council, maybe this issue, what I just brought up about some of these issues, that when it comes to public policy, that they're, that oftentimes city councils are, it's difficult because of the flow of business, what we just saw Ms. Klima present. It's difficult for city individual city council members to try to get public policy uh, objectives or public policy initiatives. It's hard to get those through the council and there's a reason for that. But I would question on this whole structure, whether or not once a year, maybe twice a year, uh, in addition to the suggestions about the budget and the more proactive role of the council at the committee level and the council level, whether or not we shouldn't have city council meetings um, set aside for public policy discussions uh, in a more rigorous way. So that's, those are my comments. I can't hear anyone. Oh, uh, there you go. I don't, I don't know if staff is going to address your concerns or what. If not, I'd like to uh, raise an issue here. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, you bring up some excellent points, Mayor. Um, sometimes we do 
get way off track. Uh, Safe City was an excellent one. I do recall that you were not at the meeting that night that there was a vote taken on that. I was. Um, but when we do get wrapped up in things like that, which they're very, um, I don't know what my other committee member, uh, Ms. Lopez, feels about it, but when they are very volatile, very uh, timely, uh, it does torpedo anything that was going to be done on that night's agenda. And the passions flow, and it's, it's excellent to see the vibrancy of our community when they speak up. But what ultimately do they accomplish? That's something that, you know, every individual has to ask for themselves. Putting aside, putting a committee meeting aside or calling a special meeting for one single items like that, I think is something to definitely consider. But one thing that does give me pause, Mayor, on your concerns, um, <clears throat> the presentations that are made at the committee level, I, I'm very happy, I'm very impressed with how this is, has worked out. <clears throat> but again, it is only three council members out of a seven council board is hearing this. I don't know if the other four council members take the time to view this or review the material. So they come in trusting the minority of their seven members, the three of us, whatever decision we make, and they may accept it. Uh, you know, I can say sometimes the word may not be appropriate, but blindly, I think fits. And with that, uh, there is a limitation that we have imposed on ourselves that the meetings will end at 10 o'clock. Sometimes these things need to be discussed before we bounce up on that threshold of we got to go home at 10 o'clock. Um, those are just my concerns. But again, uh, I appreciate all the members of the committee's comments. And I do appreciate the staff putting this thing together because I believe we are a hell of a lot better spot than we were a few years ago. Thank you. Thank you. And I... And uh, that brings up one last issue, but I want to go next to Council uh, Committee Member Lopez and see if she has any comments or any additional suggestions. Yeah, th thank you. I, I think that these are all definitely uh, valid points, and I think uh, part of um, this conversation to determine. And I think the purpose of of this item, at least from staff, is is for planning purposes on their end as well. Um, but also, you know, understanding that there are certain things that we can't plan for, right? And um, the the makeup of the council uh, and the interest and and goals of each uh, of each member are going to be uh, different and so I think in in better organizing the items throughout the year would help staff uh, fill in those requests that do come from from council members um, throughout the year just depending on that because I do agree that there's there's some issues that come up that we can't plan for that we don't know are going to be requested um, but if uh, if our staff has an understanding of, of how heavy an agenda is on the uh, regular business that the council needs to address then they can help to add or plan for those uh, additional items that that are not scheduled um, to make sure that we do give the appropriate attention and action to the to council business, um, but also give members that that opportunity uh, to bring other issues forward. So um, I, I, I think there's there's some consideration if if you know if, if we know that an, an item is going to be um, such as the safe cities uh, discussion that happened. I wasn't on the council at that time, but um, you know, knowing that there's some issues uh, that that are uh, more sensitive and and may require more time and attention, then then that's when we, you know perhaps uh, that can come to the finance and governance committee to determine if it if it can go on an agenda, a uh, regular agenda, or if a special meeting needs to be called. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And and just to um, talk about a couple of things here, um, one of the initial hesitations by some members of the council to even go to a committee si uh, system was this thought that somehow the whole legislative body would be left out of key and crucial either information and or the ability to make decisions. And that certainly was a legitimate concern. But I think Mr. Nguyen, and I want to thank Mr. Nguyen because he got this he got this committee system implemented something I was not successful at doing as mayor. I mean, at least I'm successful now, but it was through his help that we got this done that I think this is where, when I give the grade of the, this first year after the committee process, I give it a B is the room for growth and the room is, is of actual vetting and decision-making at the committee level and meaningful decision-making. And it's my argument that 
The only things that should be going to, to committees are, are either, um, the, the only things that should be going to committees are, are largely speaking, those that require uh, public policy decisions. And somebody might say, well, how are we gonna know that unless we have a discussion about it? So I think that the committee system and these public policy options are most important. And let me get right into the council meeting itself. Council meetings start at six o'clock. Don't worry about it. And, and the average member of the public is, is, on, is tuned in till about nine o'clock. I think after nine o'clock, you're gonna see the people drop off. What is the most important thing that the city council should and can be talking about between six and 9 p.m.? That's what we should be doing at city council meetings. And uh, you know, when it comes to ceremonial items, as an example, we see sometimes if two and three of them get stacked up, that they become a priority. The ceremonial item becomes a priority over the public policy discussion. So six to nine o'clock at the council meeting is prime time. And that's when the most important discussions should be taking place amongst the council members and that the public is tuned in. That's what transparency is all about. But if we have the first couple of hours of a meeting that are sidetracked with all these other quote unquote busy items, the members of the public, it isn't transparent, I would argue. And I would just end uh, by saying that um, I think this was a good start at the committee system. I, I, I mean, a B grade is, I'm kind of a hard grader, but a B grade is, a, is, is above, way above average. I, I think the city manager and his staff have done a good job uh, in this first year of the committee system, but it does have room to go uh, and, uh, or a way to go. And I know what some of the committee members are thinking, maybe even some of the staff members, well, Mayor, you're only here for three more months. Uh, and Councilman Prolo has mentioned that a couple of times. You're right. Uh, but I would like, as a part of my contribution to this council and the legacy that um, I added something meaningful, purposeful, um, to the decision-making process of the city council. Mr. Mayor, this is the city manager. And I just want to say thank you. I'll take a B anytime. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm a hard grader, Mr. Nguyen. So that was one of the complaints of my students. Uh, I didn't give out A's, enough A's and things of that nature. But any other further comments from members of the committee? Uh, Ms. Yes, uh, sorry. Oh, yes. yes. I just had a quick uh, question uh, to clarify. So um, it's my understanding. So if, if uh, Ms. Klima can address this, because I think um, uh, Mr. Fisher was uh, uh, was adding a comment um, uh, when you uh, were providing your feedback, um, just to clarify that the list that has been provided, these are all items that um, may or may not go directly to council, but, the, but staff will go back and, and determine which of these would go through committee first. Yes, council member. So um, we're going to come back to finance and governance committee. We're going to have more items on this uh, routine calendar for you guys to review. We will also pursuant to your request, provide then the committee calendars uh, so that you'll see which of these items need to go to committee first. Many of them will need to go to committee first, but they go to different committees, of course. And we'll also add the times pursuant to your request. Mayor, committee, committee member Perillo. Yes, um, your your comment about the ceremonial calendars uh, is very appropriate. I believe there are a tremendous amount of things that we need for the ceremony. But you're right, the public's uh, attention span sometimes is limited unless it's a very very hot item that they're interested in. Six to ten should be city business. If we're going to have ceremonial calendars, um, I know that we do have them sometimes earlier, but I would hope that they would all be before the business of the city because no matter what the ceremony. Uh, and that no disrespect to any group or person, the business of the city is to move forward to take care of all the residents of the city. And if we have the limited amount of time, we got to maximize our time. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I, Mr. Nguyen, I'd like to thank you, uh, the city attorney, uh, members of this committee. And I want to especially thank Ms. Klima, who, um, whose organizational talents are um, uh, above the B average, I give Ms. Klima's organizational uh, talents an A, Mr. City Manager. So while the overall grade on the committee system uh, is a B for the first year, uh, I'd give Ms. Klima an A in her organizational abilities and her uh, focus 
And I think these remarks were timely and hopefully what comes back to this committee, and I hope that's uh, before um, December 8th, I think it is, um, that we can make some critical decisions that will help make decision making ever more effective. Any additional comments by the committee? Um, <clears throat> okay, um, I know Mr. City Manager, is it gonna be the next, I can't remember, is it gonna be the next committee uh, meeting in two weeks where we talk about the items that were requested by committee members that we didn't get around to that first year that we're gonna determine whether or not those items still need to be pursued or how are we gonna do that? Yes, Mayor, that's coming to you next meeting. Okay, next meeting. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, are, are there any future uh, items uh, that council that committee members would like on this agenda? Council, uh, committee member Perello, look, I didn't know. No, I'm I'm just looking forward to that that item coming back so we straighten out where we're going. Very well. Thank you. Uh huh. Uh, committee member Lopez, any any items that you would like brought forward to the committee? Uh, not at this time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, on that note, then this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.